because a lot of times there was some time I just don't have that many interesting things to say. Uh, I want to defend uh, not the narcissists uh, and the people who will send you off the wall tweets, but rather someone else you described a moment ago, which is the pajama clad opinionated basement dwelling blogger. <laughs> that rare, that you know, species, it's no longer. Is that where you write your Huff Post <laughs> postings, my friend? Exactly. I am that man. <laughs> um, and I read a lot of those people, and some of them are amazingly good. Some of them are trolling the internet, doing real research, and holding the press accountable. Yes, they have opinions, but they are backed with links. You can go back to the original sources. It's, it's tough and alarming, and the attitude that comes with it is sometimes off-putting. There's a lot of snark and a lot of bitterness, but there's also a lot of very useful, informative stuff. And because none of these people necessarily are working for a brand name, it doesn't mean that they don't have something uh, as useful to bring to the party as the people with parking spaces on the op-ed pages of no, our great I, newspapers. I totally agree with that. But I think for every one of those well-educated, well-informed bloggers, mm -hmm. there is someone who is, uh, you know, uh, spouting vitriol and opinion without portfolio, and uh, it is is a complete sort of is misleading in his or her assertions or doesn't have the background to necessarily inform, doesn't have any editors, doesn't have anybody holding their feet to the fire to say, is this factual? Is this true? Did you second source this? Where but did you isn't the this? audience in some way that collective editor sending back saying, you don't know what you're talking about, what about this? I think at times, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not saying, I, obviously, there are a lot of very smart, useful bloggers. But, but I don't know about you, but I read the comment sections in mm -hmm. some of these uh, internet sites, and I'm absolutely appalled by the level of ignorance and hate and uh, the kind of letters that secretaries in news, newsrooms used to go, get and throw in the circular file because they were complete un lunatics. And now they live on a, in perpetuity because they have a forum. And I think some of that is really damaging to civil discourse and to sort of, uh, you know, our ability to have a, a civil conversation about important issues. Absolutely. And some of that becomes fact then, even though it is not. And it That's hasn't true. been sourced. And, and all of a sudden we are running around trying to make sure yes, that people it, game the system and inject stuff in it in order to masquerade as absolutely, information. Absolutely. But that's a big part. I consider a big part of my job is, and increasingly every every month, every year, is sifting through what's on the internet and acting like an editor for my audience. Um, and you know, you we're, we get labeled as the mainstream media, and sometimes we we choke off uh, stories we probably shouldn't choke off. At the same time, you do learn, you know, what to pay attention to and what not to pay attention to. The comments are are generally. You know, you're anonymous. You get to say whatever you want, but that, but what we have to do is try to go through it and figure out when is one of these bloggers or groups of bloggers onto something that we should be paying attention to. When should we jump on it and and give it a, a, a put a spotlight on it? And when is it just noise that that you should ignore? And there are clues out there. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we all get it. You know, after an interview, you'll get 300 emails that. Boy, all sounds suspiciously alike <laughs> on, on, on one side, or you know, 300 emails that sound suspicious, suspiciously alike on the other, and you really can ignore that. You know that it's just been an organized effort by one partisan group to to play, you know, to, to game the ref. Um, and on the other hand, if you go sift through and you see a unique, interesting a voice who's, who's saying something in a way you hadn't heard before, it makes sense to pay attention to it. And you do see a lot of very thoughtful, you know, I'm, I'm also, I don't, I don't want to, you know, broad everyone, paint everyone with a, with a broad brush, but you do see very insightful, thoughtful, you know, highly intelligent things, just as I love reading the letters to the editors mm -hmm. in major newspapers, because sometimes I think those people make a lot more sense than anything that I've read in the previous days. So... I think, you know, again, I don't want to be totally critical, but I think some of the stuff is really a little scary. You also made a deft shift there, Mr. Kaplan, uh, when you said on the op-ed page of the newspapers, which is a slightly different function, 
crucial or even more crucial to political discourse, but not exactly the same as journalism. I, l Very wonderfully, well. wonderfully, there's a lot of young people here in this room, and I'm sure you've learned if you're pitching a freelance piece, magazine, or to whomever, um, the editors want to know if you can write, but they want to know what your standing is to do that piece. Do you have special knowledge? Why should the assignment go to you? Have you done special research, journalistic, that kind of stuff? And that's what's missing with a lot of the online stuff. People with a global platform with little demonstrable standing to weigh in on some of the stuff. And if there's ways that we can help or some other mechanism can help in being the curator for that information, I think that's probably a useful function. Um, I want to just add one more piece to this, unless, Rick, you wanted to. Okay, one more piece as we 